OneNote and Notability are two of, in my opinion, the best note-taking apps that you can use on any tablet or device, really, especially for the iPad Pro. So I'll just go through both of them really quick and make some quick comparisons and then tell you why I choose one application over the other. You can see some of the notes I've been working on, um, in this case some uh, physics. And if we can, just, we can just take a look at basically some of the features that we have up here. So um, on the top left, uh, we have a share option, which you can just basically email your notes to yourself or save them in um, some cloud storage. And then you can also um, open them via other apps and save them as PDFs and also print them which is really handy to do, especially since Notability fixes the width of the page. So you can see here the width is fixed like a regular notebook, but the length, the number of pages you can have is unlimited, but you can't scroll to the left forever like you can in OneNote, and I'll show that later. Then to the right of that, we have the undo button, and then we have this text button right here, which basically you can just allows you to click anywhere and then start typing. Um, usually I have the smart keyboard connected, but right now I don't. But you can, if you want to type your notes, you can uh, easily type them here. And I switched the, I kept the font as noteworthy. Um, that's my default font, and you can change that too. And then also what I like about that is once you're done with that, it um, it automatically fixes the lines here so that the the size of the text fits um, appropriately. It doesn't like it doesn't span over two lines if you know what I mean. It, it makes the gap between the lines um, appropriate for the size of the text you choose. Then you can choose the size of your text here. You can choose 16, 17, you know, the standard stuff. And then of course the color, bold, italics, whatever. And then this ABC you see here on the right, um, if I click A or B or C, that's those are my saved, um, font, my saved uh, fonts. So the sizes and the fonts and the styles I like. You can save three of them, which is really handy too. And then of course you can use bullet points and make lists. So that's really handy. But the most the most handy feature I think is obviously um, writing with this, right? So I'm using the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil specifically to take notes because you know you want to take notes on this device because the Apple Pencil is so nice with the ProMotion display. So here you can obviously it writes really naturally, um, just like. Um, any other pen or pencil um, and I basically just uh, you know take my notes here and then you can choose all these different colors and the size of your pen you know pretty standard stuff and you can turn on pressure sensitivity here or turn it off I usually keep it off because it's just I don't have to worry about how hard I'm pressing then because it's it can sometimes be a little bit too sensitive of course there's palm rejections so I can rest my palm on the display. I know you can't see it, but I'm resting my palm on it right now. And then you also have a highlighter tool, which you can obviously, again, choose your width of the highlighter, the colors, etc., which is useful. Unfortunately, with iPad Pro, you don't have a pen, I mean, an eraser built into the pencil. So you have to use the eraser tool right here. Um, and then I can just erase this theta, or uh, phi, and put it back. Phi, whatever, however it's pronounced. And then you have a cut tool here so you can basically just cut stuff. I can cut this um, cosine here or maybe I can cut, um, let's see, I'm doing electric dipole moments, right? So I can, here's the torque uh, formula, so I can just cut this torque formula and then after that you can um, copy it or move it or delete it, stuff like that. And I can just like shift this here if I want or just I'll just leave it where it was because it was fine. So th that's a really useful tool to have too. And you can choose it as like a lasso type of scenario where you draw what you want, or you can choose it as a box. So you just box something and then move it like that. I, I usually prefer the one where you draw, you circle what you want to move. Because then you can get a more, you know, you're not limited. And then this the this touch icon is just so you can use it with um, your finger. But you can move, you can scroll with your finger even if you're in the drawing um, tab. So, okay, and then here we have the microphone. So right now it's recording me as I'm, you know, t making this video and that's really useful if you're in class and you want to take lectures and now if you see I'm going to start drawing so pretend like I'm taking notes just writing this really quickly and then when I stop the microphone and I play it back hold on let me make sure my 
volume is down. It looks like it. Okay, so now if I when I play it back, and you'll see that my um, the notes that I wrote are faded right now. But when it comes when I start talking at that particular location, it'll start drawing over the faded. Um, see, it's drawing over it right now, showing you when you wrote what you wrote. So at what point in the lecture did you write what I wrote? So that, that's a really handy feature, I think, because it, it, you know, it makes it easy to take notes during class, and you can always rewind and see what you wrote down at what point if you missed it during class. And you can edit it here and delete them. The only problem with this, though, is that they do take, if you record all your lectures, it might take up a lot of storage on your device. Um, so, you know, or if you store it on a cloud-based service, it'll take a lot of storage. So if you have enough storage, I guess that's fine, but if you don't, then uh, I would probably refrain from using the microphone feature too often. Another one of my favorite features here is this plus sign, which allows you to add photos. Um, you can take a photo too, figures. Uh, adding figures is always fun to do, you know, you can draw something. Um, uh, right, Mr. Singh here. And then you click done, and then it adds it, and then you can move it around, and you know do whatever you want with it. And then I more than adding figures or web clips, even I actually haven't added a single web clip because it's not I don't I don't really use that that often. But I had I had a lot of stickies, specifically grid stickies. So you can add basically graph paper in the middle of your notes, um, change the paper to whatever color you want, whatever size you want the 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 grid lines to be. Uh, so you click on paper, yeah, see, then, you can, then you can choose whatever, whichever one you want. So if I want this one, I want bigger, or even or smaller, or bigger, you know, you can choose. And that's really useful when I insert graphs into my notes. And I'll show you that right really quickly here. So I have Calculus 3 pulled up, and here, so, so we're, I was doing cylinders and surfaces, and here, so here I drew some, I inserted some graphs, and I got to draw them. They don't look that pretty in this one. This one looks better. Uh, and you can see some of the other ones, too. Like this one, this one looks pretty nice. Too. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty simple graphs, but it makes it easier. So you don't have to use the lines. You can use an actual graph paper. Plus, it change. You can change the. It automatically changes the color, but you can change the color so that it's it's distinct from the color of your paper that you're using. And then here you have your settings, which basically allows you to change your paper size, color, etc. Um, not paper size, paper. Um like if the ruling so college ruled wide ruled or like extra wide ruled I guess or graph paper and of course the colors I just prefer white um, because it looks most natural to me that way and then on the right most you can look at all your pages and see what you have written on the side and I guess you can search in here too so let me see if that works if it can read my handwriting I've never actually tried this actually I guess not I guess this only works if you've typed stuff um, it, maybe if I type in electric, let's see if that comes up. Okay, it doesn't even recognize the title, I suppose, which is a little strange, but, you know, maybe I just don't know enough about it to actually make that kind of decision. So that's basically how I use Notability. On the, in the main, when you first open it, you usually see something like this, where you can separate your notes by subject or divider here. So these black uh, arrows that I just popped down are the dividers, and within the dividers are the, are the different subjects that you have, so Calculus 3 or Physics 118, um, etc. And so then I have some MCAT preparation stuff you can see, in the, and then in my sophomore year I have Calc 3 and Physics 2, um, which is what I'm working on. So one more thing I, I guess I, someone pointed out to me that I forgot to point out is that also notability when you draw, if you're drawing a line, oh whoops, so it's just to draw, if you're drawing a line and it doesn't come out that straight, you hold it down, for a little bit and it straightens the line for you which is a neat feature but I'm going to show you in a second that um, OneNote actually has a much cooler feature in my opinion uh, where you draw something and it converts it into a shape which is much more useful than notabilities just straightening out a line so if they added an ink to shape feature I would be super pleased because I love making perfect boxes when I'm boxing my answer but I have to settle for these you know these oops these uh, weird looking ones right here but uh, let's let's just jump into Notability then. I mean, uh, OneNote, since that's basically all about uh, I have to say about Notability. So here we have OneNote. Now OneNote has I feel like a lot more features um, in terms of if if you're using this as like a word processing slash note taking app on your computer. But in terms of drawing, even though OneNote does have a lot more a lot uh, better color options, like look at this 
this is a beautiful wheel you can see right here. And you can change, you know, each change the gradient, you know, so so nicely on here, which I really love. But um, you can also, uh, you know, you have your standard eraser, pen, marker. Well, marker is new. Uh, Notability doesn't have a marker. It just has a pencil or a pen or, you know, some kind of hybrid. But this one has, you know, a pen and a marker, which is kind of neat, and a highlighter. So it gives you a little bit more options. And here you can change the width, of course. You can have text mode, lasso, lasso select, just like in Notability, where you select what you want, and then you can drag it around if you need to. The um, thing I don't like about this, though, is that, uh, so if I enter full scale mode here, uh, you can keep switch moving this over to the right. So I know right now it doesn't look like you can, but if I started writing here, hold on, let me switch this on. If I started writing here, and then I start writing here, see, it just keeps scrolling over to the right, which makes printing your notes a pain because you never know where to stop writing, um, like how far you're allowed to write, especially when you're zooming in and out. It's really hard to, I know there are ways where you can create a template and then it'll put like a, it'll put like a line here to tell you to stop writing right here. But that's, it's like, it, that shouldn't have to be a problem. It should, there should be an option where it'll, it'll just fix the width and let you increase the length as much as you need. Um, so that's why I really don't like using OneNote for the most part. It says I can't print my notes or share them with myself that easily because as a PDF, they take over many, they spread over many pages. It's also a lot easier to um, basically uh, share notes via Notability than it is to do in OneNote, in my opinion. Um, it's only for the iPad app, at least. On the desktop, I guess it's easier on, they're about the same. But for the iPad app, I think it's easier to do on Notability for sure. And here's the ink to shape feature I was talking about on OneNote, which I really loved. So if you draw a circle, it'll fix your circle into a nice one. Or if you draw a box, it'll fix it. If you draw a triangle, it'll fix that. It you know it it fixes lines. So oh, maybe it doesn't fix lines actually. That's interesting. I I always assumed it did, but I guess it doesn't fix lines, which is kind of strange, I suppose. But. It, the bot, I, I like the shape feature more anyway, though, because that's what you're going to need. You know, it makes it look a lot prettier. So when I box my answers here, like look at this 1.5 amp, that's boxed out nicely because of the ink to shape feature, which is something that Notability uh, lacks a lot. Um, oh, also, let me show this in Notability really quick. Um, I, this is something you should, and that's good to point out. So if you want to zoom in a lot, you can click the Zoom In tab all the way in the bottom right, and then you can really get into here. And if you want, if you want to write something really small right here, like that's awesome. Obviously, I need to change this too. So if I make this smaller, it's awesome. Then you know, and then you can uh, zoom out again. There's, it. and then it, see it's written there, which is a lot easier to do without having to like keep zooming in and zoom pinching to zoom out. And especially, this is, I know I don't have an example of this right now, but it's helpful with PDF handouts or PowerPoint printouts when there's a lot of text everywhere and you're trying to write really small in between some of the text that your professor may give you. That's actually a really useful feature. Um, jumping back to OneNote, though, if, when I was looking at it, you can see that the um, it has it has basically the same you know standard features of any note taking app, you know, you can zoom in and zoom out and when you're viewing it you can switch to 100% mode to kind of get an idea of where, you know, where you need to stay in the margins when you're writing. Um, and then you can do you can switch it from 100% to page width to fix it. Paper color, you know, just like notability and paper style, same thing rule lines, grid lines. Password protection is kind of nice um, on here. I didn't know that OneNote had that until now. I didn't well I didn't remember that at least. Then you can insert PDFs um, files, you know, all the stuff you can do in Notability too. You can definitely enter PDFs into Notability as well. Um, and then here are your options for typing um, and if you want to on OneNote, um, if you're using it as like a desktop or if you're using it on your tablet, if you just need to type stuff. Uh, so I'm going to open a document in Notability and OneNote and just show you how they both handle it. So here's an amino acids quiz that I had to take a while ago. So I click here, this is on, I'm on OneDrive by the way, the OneDrive app. And I click on here uh, and I click open in another app. So it downloads the amino acids quiz that I 
uh, took. So um, I click open in another app, then I can choose what app I want. So I can choose um, Notability or uh, where is uh, OneNote? Let me turn on OneNote. Okay. So I'll just start with Notabilities. I click Notability, it's sent to Notability, click OK, switch back to Notability. It imports the um, document. Okay, so it's imported. It imported it to physics. I can switch that here and tell it to import it into unfiled notes instead. I click open, and voila, here's my amino acid squids. So now what I can do is I can, you know, write on it if I need to. I can, you know, circle. I can take the quiz. Um, you know, I write, these are the answers, too, that I wrote. And, you know, I can highlight stuff that I need to. You know, it's, just, it's a really useful thing. You can do this with, you know, I did it with a Word document right now. I can even do it with PDF documents, you know, PowerPoints, like all those kind of stuff, PowerPoint printouts. Um, it's really useful. So I'm just going to go back now. I'm going to go to Unfiled Notes. Let me delete that because I don't want that in there. And now I'm going to go back to OneDrive and do the same thing, except this time I'm going to open it with uh, OneNote just to see... Um, I don't know why you have to click it twice, but sometimes you do. See, uh, you, I mean, it's going to add it to my Physics Summer 2017. Okay, that's fine. Uh, type. Okay, so we send it to OneNote. I suppose it's sent. Let's check it. Yeah, here it is. So, I, so it didn't give me a notification telling me it's sent, but you know that's fine. Then I click on amino acids quiz here, and of course it opens it up in Microsoft Word, which is really silly. So I've actually never opened anything with on OneNote in terms of you know, in terms of like a you know, uh, Word document, but it didn't save it in the note. It, it's making me go to Microsoft Word to access the note, which I guess kind of makes sense because, you know, like here right now I can preview it, but I can't actually get the file in the, in the note itself. So let me try inserting a file here instead. Okay. So I can go to OneDrive and maybe I'll be able to insert it. You know, assets quiz. See, and then it just it literally just put it there. Which I, I guess kind of makes sense because on Microsoft Word you can draw here. I'm not going to draw because I don't want it to save it, but you can draw on here. Um, which I guess is fine, but it's 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 not as useful to me as what Notability can do. So that's basically it. That's basically all I wanted to show. Notability does cost $10, while OneNote is free. But I do think just for the fact that you can print the notes, the $10 is definitely worth it. So Notability is my go-to note-taking app now on the iPad Pro. Uh, I hope this was a helpful video, and I will see you in the next one.